Uh, my name is Jack Baldwin. I'm with Raynard Custom Homes. This is our webinar on how to get the very best construction loan possible for your custom home design and build. And today I've got a friend of mine, Libby Long from Truist Bank. How are you, Libby? I'm good. How is everybody doing? I'm still getting used to saying Truist. I'm, I'm a native Atlantan who grew up here. And uh, if you've been around Georgia very long, you've uh, heard the name SunTrust. Uh, so y'all made a, um, a change recently. So uh, tell us about your background, Libby. How long have you been in the construction loan uh, business? How long have you been with SunTrust Truist? Uh, just tell us a little bit about who you are and, and uh, what brought you here today. Absolutely. So I am Heritage SunTrust also. <laughs> um, yes. So go back many, many years. I actually moved to Atlanta right out of college. Um, almost immediately started with SunTrust and will celebrate my 20th anniversary in December. Wow, so, congrats. Been looking a very long time, always yeah. with the mortgage department. Um, so I started out sort of doing more assistant work for two loan officers. And then I've been originating now for about 10 years. Um, so also very, very, um, very, or, or do a lot of work with new construction, especially since the pandemic, we found that there has been a big boom in construction lending. Uh, yeah, we like are, that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, renovating is, you know, sometimes more favorable than finding something new with inventory shortages. Um, and if you're in a good location, things like that. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, well, you and I got to spend some time together in uh, mid-June, and I, I was scribbling notes as fast as I could <laughs> while I was talking to you, because I, I myself had so many questions about this process, so I knew um, that you would have some expertise for us um, about the construction loan process. As we talked, I realized it can be very complicated, but it was really good that uh, you were starting to, to help me understand kind of the picture of how these things unfold. And um, that's what we're going to dive into today is the process. Uh, but I want to start with kind of a real softball question just to get the conversation going. What is a construction loan specifically? Uh, what is it good for as far as um, what is it applicable to? Some people have asked me some questions about land purchases and how that ties into a construction loan. And this is a very specific solution um, for a very specific type of loan. And so there are some parameters, but I wanted to just get that uh, response from you. What is a construction loan? What is it uh, applicable for? So a construction loan is specifically designed to set up a construction line to use to either renovate an existing home or to do a new build, um, also a teardown. So if you were to already own a home that you would like to completely uh, redo from the ground up, it would be a solution for that as well. Um, so at closing, you are the homeowner. If you already own the land, that would be the case. Or if you wanted to build in the purchase of a lot, you could do that as well. Um, so it would it's fronting sort of the cost to build um, through a line that is drawn through construction. And then you take over the permanent loan at the very end. Um, so it's a little different than if you were to, to purchase a home, obviously, and just um, pay a seller or if you were to go to a builder that had a design center and already owned the land and in that case they're the homeowner or the landowner until construction is finished and then you take it over from there um, so it's really meant to renovate a home that you already have or uh, if you wanted to buy land and build something new um, that's that's sort of um, its focus okay. Yeah, a lot, lot of the people, uh, we're, uh, the majority, almost pretty much 100% of the folks that work with us at Raynard Custom Homes, they are uh, looking to take a piece of undeveloped property and mm -hmm. put their dream home on that property. And so as they're going from, hey, I've got a dream, I'm, I'm excited, I just purchased this piece of property, um, that's usually the starting point. Uh, excuse me while I let some folks in. Uh, that's usually the starting point is um, I've got the piece of property and I'm ready to start developing, but the process is a little intimidating. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes it's like, where do I start? Uh, is it chicken? Is it egg? Um, I want to talk about the process. So we, we kind of outlined the parameters of what a construction loan is for, but what's the process from start to finish when, when somebody comes to you? What are you looking for? to uh, make sure that they're well qualified? Um, what helps them succeed with the construction loan and the process? 
Um, so the first step really is an application. It's, it, that would be the same as applying really for any um, any type of loan, be it traditional or a more complex program. Um, it, the construction loan does have sort of a three-part process. Mm -hmm. So you have the application, and then you'll also have a review of the entire build. So of the, the project approval, um, the builder approval and credit file, um, you move to closing, and then you have the build, uh, you do the draws through construction, and then the final third piece is going to be the perm or the perm up of the, of the loan. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess for the initial step would be if um, going over the product parameters, so what you're looking to build, the scope of work, uh, loan to value, also if you already own your land or if that will be part of the construction loan, sort of how to set up uh, either as a purchase or as a refinance. And that would be if you if you already own the land, um, we'd look at it sort of like a refinance. Um, and then also to you would need, well, you don't need for a pre-approval purposes, but eventually, uh, of course, your architectural design plans and then an executed contract with your builder um, mm -hmm. to kind of do the full review for, for, loan, for the loan approval. And you did tell me when we met specifications are also something that you're going to need to finalize they that loan? Are, yes. So it'd be plans and specs, a cost estimate. Um, so we know exactly uh, materials used and things like that. Okay. And and what does that help the bank with? Is that for appraisal of, or what is, why do they require that? I guess if, if, if I'm phrasing yes. it properly. Because it impact, it does impact value. So we're looking to give all these pieces basically to an appraiser and he's going to come back and say that the home, if it were sitting right here today, based on the uh, other comparables in the neighborhood, would appraise for X dollars. So anything that could impact the value and that would be the contract and of course the land uh, value and then materials used, upgrades, things like that uh, will, all, will all be factored into that value. Great. That helps a lot because it helps kind of lay out the the procedure. Um, my friend Chris uh, asked a question I do want to actually bring into the conversation because mm -hmm. uh, this question did come up quite a bit and it comes up a lot when I'm talking to folks. Um, the land itself, uh, what are their options there? If, if say we've got a piece of land and we're still paying on it, we don't own it mm -hmm. outright and it's, and it's got a note. Um, can we consolidate that into a construction loan? I think you talked a little bit about that a moment ago. Um, it's kind of a two-part question, but can we consolidate that into the construction loan um, or can we use it as collateral? Can it be used as um, any kind of uh, value that helps with the loan process, if that makes sense? Yes. So the, the lot, if there is a loan on the land, we would pay it off at closing. So that would be part of the overall um, acquisition cost. So we would pay off any lot loan that might be existing and set up the construction loan. So you'll end up with one payment at the very end, one principal balance at the end of construction. One throat to uh, choke, we like to say. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Um, so yes, and any value, any equity that's already in the land will go towards the loan to value. So, you know, if the land is free and clear, then whatever the equity would be will, will of course, impact the loan to value. So the higher the loan to, or the, I guess, the lower the loan to value, I should say, um, of course, that will improve the interest rate and ability to finance more. If you're looking to uh, max out the amount of construction costs, you know, the more equity that we have in the project um, gives a little bit more flexibility. Yeah, I, I hope that helps uh, answer that question and, and we will have a Q&A towards the end so we can dialogue a little bit more if we need to. Um, but that does bring up another point. Um, when I go, so I know there's there are all kinds of different mortgage products out there, right? Mm -hmm. Like when I went to buy my home a while ago, I, I actually went through the, um, ag the federal agricultural, um, I think it was FDA. So I was able mm -hmm. to get uh, an FDA loan because of I was uh, bought a home in rural Georgia, so the the down payment requirements were very different, and I took advantage of that. But with a construction loan, a new construction loan, it's probably a different animal as we're we're kind of uncovering as we talk about. Um, but what do I need to to have ready for a construction loan? 
Um, so in terms of a down payment, in terms of final approval, so in addition to the plans and specs that we talked about and an executed contract with the builder, um, what should a homeowner be prepared to have at the table, so to speak? So a construction loan does require that you have 20% equity. So we'll finance 80% of either the total acquisition cost. So that is the base price of the land or what uh, the base price of the lot plus the cost to construct. So if that is within a 12 month period of lot acquisition, so if you bought the land and got a loan or um, if you were purchasing the land at closing, then we'll do 80% of the cost of the land plus your cost to construct. So um, you would owe 20% of that dollar amount at closing. If you've owned the land over 12 months, we'll go off of the future value of the home. So we'll use the appraised value. Mm -hmm. um, probably get a little bit more loan to value after 12 months. Uh, you've been making payments if you do have a loan. Um, also, the, the home will probably, and of course, that depends on the area and comparables, but you know, we find the home will you know, typically appraise for a little bit more than the cost to construct. So you'll have a little more flexibility with the cash due at closing in that case. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, yeah, so it's, it's gonna be the 80% the of total acquisition or appraised value. Okay, that makes sense, thank you. Um, I wanna take a little bit of a negative approach if I may, just because mm -hmm. I think it'll be enlightening. Um, in your experience, why, do, why would it fail? when does it break apart for a homeowner like and and i think it's i'm asking from a pitfalls perspective because i hope in answering the question it'll help our um, participants today think about what could go wrong so they can avoid that and think about what needs to go right so why would the process fail what what should somebody be thinking about to avoid a failure or why have you seen it this process fail in the past um talk to me a little bit about where it breaks down so that people can think about how how to be better prepared if you might the the program is going to be because of its complexity it's a little bit stronger guideline wise mm -hmm. so the credit score requirements are are harder than would be for your traditional mortgage um especially to tiered by your equity so you know, over a 700 credit score, we've done, we can do the 80% loan to value, but below that, it's really going to be uh, more 75%. So there's a larger, uh, I guess, down payment requirement. And then really the minimum credit score for a construction loan is a 680. Uh, more traditional loan programs can go all the way to a 620. So you'll find that there are some uh, challenges that you don't run into when you're looking to purchase a regular or typical home, if you will, that you may that you may run into with the construction loan. And then of course the, the down payment and uh, being comfortable with cash to close, if it's gonna be within that 12 month timeframe. Um, and then the third would be appraisal challenges. If the home doesn't appraise for um, where, where it needs to be for the comfort level of down payment. Um, right. would be the third the third challenge that's that helps a lot i'm glad you i'm glad you 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 weighed in on that because i think if we think about what could go wrong why it, it helps us think about how to make it go right you know what i'm saying so um i also wanted to talk a little bit about the the general contractor because that's another thing that could go wrong right so what is a what are the banks looking for when somebody comes with, they've got their plans and specs, they've got their pre-approval, they've got their down payment, they might even have a, an agreement. Um, but what, what do you, uh, from the bank perspective, perspective, look for from the GC to make sure that they're well qualified, that the contract is going to work? So we do have a separate builder approval that we do prior to the to the construction approval. So the builder is going to complete a questionnaire that mm -hmm. asks for subcontractors and references and experience, um, how long they've been building, how many homes they, that are active, how many homes they built in the last year, in the last two years. 
And then we also ask for a copy of their license and their insurance. So we make sure that they are property, properly licensed and insured. Um, this is to get onto our approval list for one year. So once they go through the process, they will remain on our approved vendor list for a year. And after a year, they just really have to submit new insurance to make sure that that's been renewed properly. Um, but we do, we do vet, if you will, our builders yes. to make sure that they're meeting um, the standards that, that would be required for, for home construction. Well, that's very helpful because um, there's a lot of builders out there. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, I, I've heard all kinds of stories and, and I've seen how it goes sideways very quickly. Um, and so I think it's important to point out that you cannot just take that for granted, that just because somebody's willing to buy your home and or build your home and just because they can give you a good price point doesn't mean they're going to be able to get you there if they can't uh, pass the smell test with the bank as well. Yes, absolutely. Um, and while we're on the topic of the general contractor, um, I do want to talk about the draw schedule. Um, when when does it make sense for uh, the draws to start happening? Is it the general contractor who's taking them? What does the draw process look like? When did they start receiving funds for the actual construction? So the draw schedule is set up prior to closing and it's agreed upon between uh, both builder and uh, and the borrower. And it's gonna have certain percentages. So as you move through the process, you've reached you know 25% completion, um, you are ready for your next draw. You can take a 10% draw at closing. So mm -hmm. at the closing table, they'll allow an immediate 10% draw. And that's really to get started on things mm -hmm. like permits or uh, deposits that may be needed on things that are taking a really long time to come in in this environment. Um, with supply chain issues and things like that. Uh, once the loan closes, it is onboarded to an online tool called Built, and Built is actually the, the system used for all draw requests. So you would request the draw, can either go to the buyer or the builder, and when they make the request, they'll send out an inspector to make sure the work has been completed as agreed uh, through the draw schedule, and then they'll release the funds. It, it typically takes about 24 hours after requesting to get the funds. Great. That's that's great to know. Because, um, it again, knowing the process really helps. You know, if we're going to go from point A to point Z, really, it's, it's understanding how things should work. And I think that gives a lot of clarities. Um, I, I want to sh uh, shift gears a little bit more, too, um, and talk specifically about Truist. Um, and this is not just to give you a platform, <laughs> although although I um, I'm happy to because you've uh, given us your time and, and your expertise today. But um, how how does Truist construction loans compare to uh, other market uh, marketable construction loans? And I'm asking because it's good to compare and it's good to understand not just why should we go with Truist. But just to give us more and more understanding, like what what, do you, what does Truist do differently, or um, how have you created your product in a way to protect homeowners that maybe some other lenders are, you know, hey, they're just like really ready to get money out there because they they're a, a different kind of bank, for example. But you know, some of the questions that came up too, and and uh, the pre. Uh, registration dialogue was, um, you know, credit unions and cash and you know, banks and, and kind of understanding that complexity. But let's talk about what Truist does versus the rest of the market, um, really to understand like why you've crafted it that way and how it should benefit a homeowner. So our construction loan has been around for a really, really long time. Uh, it has had very little changes made to it. So, and, and when they do make changes, it's only to improve. Um, we have an entire dedicated team that only underwrites processes, closes, and then maintains construction or the construction process until the permanent phase. So, you know, you, the, they've been doing it a very long time. They're very good at it. Uh, we also have a one-time close. So that saves paperwork. It saves money. It saves cost of or closing costs um, without having to reclose at the very end. Uh, we also secure the interest rate up front which takes a lot of the guesswork out of the end rate. So we know that it can be no higher than what we secure at closing. 
Um, we do have a float down feature. So when you're 30 days from project completion, you can take advantage of a lower interest rate if the market has improved. Um, but we know that it can't be any higher than what we secure at closing. So sort of a rate cap. Uh, during the build phase, um, which can be confusing and complex also, uh, you are assigned a construction loan analyst and they're there, there to help with all the draws, any questions that you have, um, and they're very quick to respond. And then also the built platform that we use for construction keeps it very visible. So both mm -hmm. builder and borrower can see exactly what phase you're in, what funds have been dispersed, how much you have left, um, who's requesting what, you know, there's a lot of visibility, a lot of accountability, um, a lot of safety, also just being with a, a larger bank that um, has been doing the construction lending for, for a long time. Yeah, and not not because I'm trying to be shameless, but uh, we bank with Fruist as a as a business. So uh, we we like what we've gotten from you guys. In fact, that's how I met you was uh, when we were opening our accounts. Um, the the bank the branch manager uh, told me uh, that he had uh, relocated to Atlanta so he could he could work with Libby. So uh, not only was there not only was there a good personal connection, but uh, we felt really well taken care of from Truist as well. So. Um, again, we're not, it's it's not to say like, this is the only offering out there and we're pushing our clients to go there. We're really just trying to build understanding, but um, you know, we personally in, endorsed our um, experience with Truist. Um, I was looking through the questions that came in um, from our registrations and I, I'm very hopeful that this conversation covered a lot of, I was actually going through and I felt like uh, a lot of the questions that came up were actually being addressed as we were talking. So um, thank you for that. Um, and I'm getting some questions pop in. So this is a good time to pause. Uh, we, we've got about 20 minutes and I wanna put aside about 20 more minutes, maybe 30 minutes um, with a, a target to be done uh, slightly before 5 p.m. But I'm having some questions come through, so I'd like to get to those. And I wanna pause to say anyone um, listening, if you'd like to raise your hand and verbally ask a question, I'm happy to let you unmute and talk to Libby and I directly. Um, Libby will probably have better answers than me. Um, mm. if, you, if you're more comfortable just putting it in the chat window, totally fine. I'd love to get uh, questions coming through because I find this very helpful. So let me go to our chat window. I saw a couple pop up here and uh, it's good to see some familiar faces again. Uh, Teresa, what states are you licensed in? Uh, so anywhere that there is a SunTrust branch, a brick and mortar, we can do a construction loan. So, um, you know, Georgia, Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, uh, we can also do construction loans in other states. It's just sort of a little bit more random from there. Uh, yeah. But I'd say it's safe to say if there is a SunTrust or a, a Truist presence, uh, then we can do the construction loan. Still getting used to saying tr SunTrust, I see. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that answers your question, uh, Teresa. Um, if not, um, you know, if you'd like to add something to it, please uh, feel free to unmute if you'd like to add. Um, my friend Chris, who I've known for a couple of years now, I'm glad to see you back here again. Uh, they're looking to build a brand new, beautiful home and ball ground where I lived for several years. I love love ball ground. Uh, but he was asking, do uh, does Truist give owner slash builder loans? Um, if that if that makes sense there, um, Libby, what, what would you say to somebody who's asking about owner owner builder loans? So I think the question is a self build. So if, yes, yeah, yes. that's how I. Okay. Yeah. So we do offer um, self build, so we can do a loan for a builder. Um, it has so the borrower has to generate the majority of their income from building homes. So they have to be that's what they do uh, primarily for as. Uh, basically as their income producing. So not a not a side project, is, is that how it is with Truist? Correct, it's gotten a little bit more flexible. It was, um, you know, I was actually reading recently for a self-build and you still have to be, of course, licensed and they're gonna want a resume. So, you know, just that you do, that you have built homes and, and that's, uh, it, they didn't actually still include a majority. So I think as long as you're building homes on a regular basis, that that would probably be okay. Okay, I hope that helps, Chris. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up, thank you, Chris. <laughs> um, Billy, I don't. I see. I keep seeing Billy and Tracy, so I'm not sure if Billy and Tracy or it's Billy or Tracy that's that's on the call. Hey, Billy, how are you today? Hey, good. It's just me. 
Okay, cool. <laughs> um, would you like to ask your question or I, uh, would you like me to read it for you? Yeah, I can ask. I was just curious, is the, cause I know there's, I'm pretty sure there's principal or there's interest payments paid during the construction of the home, right? So you get a monthly interest payment on the current amount drawn on the account. Is that interest rate different than the closed uh, long-term interest rate or is it the same interest rate? No, it is the same. So you're right, you make interest only payments during construction and only on the amount drawn at the time payment is due. Um, so if you brought funds to closing, for example, we would use your funds to start the build first and we would not start with the interest only payments until you actually started drawing on the construction line. And it is at note rate, uh, meaning that it would be the interest rate that we secure at closing that you would potentially take over at the end assuming that the market hasn't improved. Okay, okay, and then circling back, I think you guys said there's a 30 day to closing float down, right? But that's only 30 days before close, the final closing, right? Or is that, there's closing, I guess, at the beginning of the project, isn't it? Well, so the way the perm up works is when you are about 30 days from your CO, so about ready to take over your permanent mortgage payment, uh, the perm yep. up process is not a reclose. So uh, we don't okay. get the home, uh, you know, we don't get the or updated documentation. There's not, you don't go to a closing attorney. It is a FedEx package that is sent to you. Um, so okay. when you're 30 days from that happening, then you're, you're eligible to float down on a fixed rate product. Um, we okay. don't have a float down on an arm, but we do on the fixed rates. Okay. Well, thank you, Billy. That's a great question. And I, I think other people listening would probably benefit from that information. So thank you for asking. I hope that helps too. Um, from from uh, anyone else that has joined us today, again, I love seeing familiar faces and I love seeing people who are at various stages in their process. Uh, we've got people who are just about to kick off their project. They've got land and they're um, just ready to go. But are there any other questions that we could get to? I see Michael raised his hand, so we'll go to you, Michael. And if you'd like to unmute, go for it. All right. Yeah, thanks. Um, well, I've got a couple questions. Um, I just want to make sure I kind of understood um, the uh, the process that you were talking about regarding down payment and everything. So when you said 20%, that would be 20% of the, the value of what the home is going to be or 20% of the loan or to, to uh, I'm assuming that's like a down payment, like when you buy a traditional mortgage, right? Yeah, that's a great question because it hasn't been built yet. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's a very good question. So we will take your um, plans and specs and we'll take your contract with your builder and the deed for the land and the appraiser will come back with a value. So that value is what we use sort of to price the loan, if you will. Uh, we can finance up to 80% of that value. Um, ideally, that's the entire build, uh, or it, even better if it appraises for more, or you have a lot of equity in your lot, then you end up at, you know, say 60% loan to value, which improves the interest rate. Um, but yes, yeah, so it would be as long as you have the 20% equity or in the appraised value, then we can finance, um, I mean, hopefully as much as you would need for the, for the project. Okay. So just just simply if if the home is valued at five hundred thousand dollars then i would have to have fifty thousand dollars up front right or a hundred thousand dollars up front i mean right well and it depends on how much your cost to construct would be so if you're looking to build a home and your cost to construct with your builder is three hundred and fifty thousand and then the appraisal comes in at five hundred thousand then we would finance the full 350 because there is the 20% equity there. Um, so we're just really looking to make sure that the value of the home is at least within that, that 80% um, window. Okay, and then if I, just a follow-up question, and if I understood before the draws occur, um, the builder would be getting paid with that down payment I basically put down. First, correct? Well, so the draw schedule is going to include, so the draw schedule that you put together with the builder will determine how much 
the draws will be at certain completion levels. Mm -hmm. sure. So the 10% draw you take at closing is given to the builder and it is meant for, and, and it's agreed upon about amount. So if you didn't want to do the full 10%, if you said, I've discussed it with my builder, we would like to do a $50,000 draw at closing and that is less than 10%, then that money would be used to make deposits on things. It's meant to, um, to you know, for cabinets or permits or, or things that can take a long time to come in. Uh, but so not necessarily a, a builder funds directly to them for them to be paid per se, but it's meant to, you know, for deposits and, and really just to get the project started. Okay. And, and I'm assuming that um, the, the the certain milestones for the draws um that it would the actual um agreement as to what quote completion is defined as would be between myself and the builder or would that also be up to the lender as well well the draw schedule and it, we typically put together the draw schedule and then you review it and let us know of any changes or the builder or you or the builder can also do the draw schedule and we'll they typically will ask questions or move a couple of things around. Uh, but yes, yeah, so you would say we're at this certain spot, we're ready for the next draw. You'd request it through the system and we send the appraiser out to the property and he'll say, absolutely, it's it's at this certain percentage completion and they're ready for their next draw. Okay, all right, well, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, Michael, th those are great questions and I um, it addresses some of my curiosities as well. So I hope that everybody listening uh, benefited from that. And Libby, thank you uh, for answering. Uh, David uh, had a question that came in on the chat. And I do, Billy, I do see your hand raised. I feel like I'm a school teacher when I say that. Um, <laughs> but I will we'll get to that question next. David, unless you'd like to unmute, um, I'll, I'll read this question, um, but I'll, I'll leave it to you. Um, but David, just, yeah, would you like to participate, David? Oh, I mean, I can just listen. Oh, okay, great. Well, I'll, I'll read this out. And if you want to chime in, go for it. Um, so for some hypothetical numbers that he put together here, let's just say he has $600,000 in cash and they want to build a, a million dollar home. The target is a million dollar construction budget. Do Would he have to move money from uh, to an open account? I, I'm assuming at Truist in this scenario he created. So would he have to move money to an account at uh, Truist with interest? Uh, otherwise, he said he has money and a money market that's bearing interest. So it sounds like, what do I do with my my cash in preparation for a construction loan? Does that make sense, Libby? Yeah. Yes, and it does. Yeah, go, yeah ahead. go ahead, David. My uh, question. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. No, it does. So you're saying if you have to bring funds to closing to fully fund the build, um, you know, does it have to be? And, and there's sort of two ways of approaching it. So if you if the build is going to cost a million dollars and we're going to finance 600,000 and you're going to bring say 400,000 to the table, then if that's the way we structure it, we do collect for the full amount due at closing and it does not go into an interest bearing account. Uh, we do use it first. So it would be the funds that we use to jumpstart the project. You would not have a, a mortgage payment until we started to draw on the construction loan. Um, another way would be to finance the full million and then put the money down at the end. So go ahead and set up a construction line for a million dollars. And then when you get to the end of construction, you can choose to either take over the full dollar amount of what you've drawn, or at that time, you can say, you know what, I'd like to pay the principal balance down by 400,000 or, or to whatever loan amount you'd like. And ultimately your mortgage payment would amortize be based off of uh, that that leftover balance, if you will. Okay. That David, I, uh, yeah, and if you had any follow-ups to that, I wanna give you an opportunity. Yeah, no, I, I think I understand. Um, so if I move my money to your bank, I get no interest until that money is is gone. And then when I start using your money, I pay you interest. Is that correct? correct? Yeah, <laughs> that is, that's it. So, and if you're, if you're decide, good <laughs> right, yes. And it's not, it, it's not interest bearing. It's like almost an escrow account. Um, you know, we, when we escrow for taxes and insurance, that money set aside an account that's not making any money. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so it'd be better for me to keep it in the the uh, money, money market. market, and and that way I can offset the interest to some degree. Right, right, and then and it, knowing that you're probably not going to draw the full million, um, you know, so your interest only payments will be based on the amount that you've drawn. Um, I think you know, especially if you're using your own cash through the project for for unknown expenses, um, it would probably keep it down. Yes. Okay, and so maybe. So if I get the construction loan for a million and, you know, we get about halfway through the project, um, I can go ahead and put my 400000 in, you know, pay it down 400000 at that point, or do I have to do that, or I can only do that at the final closing? You can only do that at PermUp. So it's not a closing, um, but when they, when you go to take over that final mortgage payment, when the project's been completed, that is at that point you can decide that's what we'll take a look to see if the interest rate is improved um, and you can decide to put funds down at that time it is meant for a situation where you might be selling a home in the middle of of building your home so it wasn't sold before you closed on the construction line but it's sold in in the interim and so then you can apply those proceeds to your final loan but uh they're prepayment penalties if you pay down or pay off during construction Oh, of course there is. Okay. <laughs> but not after. <laughs> so there are no okay. prepayment penalties once you perm up. Gotcha. Okay. That, Libby, um, yeah, thanks, David. Libby, David and his wife are building a really beautiful home on a very beautiful piece of property. And I say this in a good way. It's in the middle of nowhere, mm -hmm. um, which I which I think is, is what they, is that right, David? Is that what y'all yeah, wanted? It is. I mean, it's 20 minutes from so civilization, I guess you could say. Yeah, but... <laughs> Um, I, I really love uh, having get, uh, gotten to work with you guys over the past year and really excited to see that home built. So thank you for participating today. It's good to have you on the call. Yeah, um, Billy. You. Yeah, Billy, I see, I see your hand up. Um, let's get back to you. What, what would you like to ask, Libby? Hey, I actually have two follow-ups. Yeah. Uh, one, uh, one from that recent one. Go ahead and ask that since it's fresh on our minds. Um, so speaking to the um applying your own cash to principal at the end is there a designated time period that has to be done um towards the end of the project uh to reduce the payments like to reduce the payment schedule does that does that make sense like so you're saying towards the end we can we can essentially reduce the principal amount and that would adjust the payments but is there like a six month time period after uh the that perm process that we could do that or is that really just only during that perm process um so well you can you can definitely do it once the home is completed you'll start working with your construction loan an analyst to firm up the details of your final okay. payment so you take care of your own taxes and insurance during the build so they're going to say do you want to escrow uh, if you do want to escrow we'll need to go ahead and set up an escrow account and properly fund it uh, based on on timing and then also, would you like to put any money down uh, to, yeah. to go ahead and lower your principal amount? So you can do it then. Once you perm up and take over the final mortgage payment, everything's done. You know, you've been making your mortgage payment as you always would um, for a month or two months or whatever the case may be. We do offer a recast. And okay. a recast is when you go through servicing and you request to make a a principal reduction payment and actually have your mortgage payment redone based on the new loan balance. So you can do it once every 12 months. Uh, you do have to make at least a 10% principal reduction when you do it. Uh, and they will use your existing interest rate. So it's not a refinance. You also don't lose any term. Uh, so if you are, you know, two years into your mortgage, you would not start over a 30 year term, for example, uh, but is a way to to close on the loan and then in the future have your mortgage payment reduced based off of a new and lower principal balance. OK, perfect. Yeah, because we're we're planning on holding a set amount of funds for essentially overages potentially or um, just larger purchases that we don't know about until we move into the home. So if we had like a certain amount of time to do that post closing on the home or post moving into the home, that would be nice as well. So the 10% number is, is good, uh, good information. That's what I didn't know. So, mm -hmm. 
All right, and then I'm ready for my second follow-up, Jack, if that's all right. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, go ahead. So this kind of goes back to the the 20% of appraisal value and all that kind of thing. And I just wanted to reiterate or confirm uh, that that appraisal value includes the value of the land, correct? So essentially, even if we were under 20%, you guys would still be refinancing the land and essentially taking ownership of the land from a, from a title perspective, correct? the value of the land is factored into loan to value yes so okay. it's actually a separate line item on an appraisal um it will also be part of the appraised value itself yep. so you'll see the land value is this dollars and that's actually increasing the overall appraised value um yep. so yes it is factored into the total appraisal um and and then the appraised value we would do the 80 uh, uh, we can find up to 80 percent of that okay all right thank you Excellent. Thank you, Billy. Um, I see David uh, wants to uh, ask another question, and I got a question in our chat. I want to get to right after that from Dana. So, David, go ahead. Okay. So, back to my my issues. Um, so, <laughs> if you get a, a loan for a million dollars, uh, construction loan, and so along the way, uh, if if I wanted to pay for, you know, I don't know, maybe the the, the cost of the driveway or the cost of you know, maybe the framing or something without making a draw for that? Is that a possibility or is it that, that I don't pay anything? It all has to come through the uh, construction loan. I would, that might be a conversation to have with your construction loan analyst. You don't want the draws to, to not happen. There, If there's a certain amount of time that lapses, they're going to reach out and say, what's going on? <laughs> Why haven't you requested a draw? You should awesome. be farther along by this point. Um, and so at that point, you could say, well, you know, I put a little cash into this. I decided I didn't need to take a draw, uh, but it might be worth having a conversation with them first just to make sure it's not. I mean, ultimately, when you go to make your next draw, the draw schedule will be where it should be to receive it, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. I don't think it would be uh, necessarily an issue, but still just because it is not uh, the procedure, I would let them know kind of in advance sort of and, and make sure that that would be okay. Okay. Awesome. Good. Another good question. Um, I want to get to Dana's question. Um, I'm familiar with this project and I'm very excited uh, to get started to work with her and her family. Um, they are looking to do some homesteading type of uh, project on their land uh, that they have outside of Atlanta. And Dana, if you'd like to chime in, please do. But I'm going to read your question. And if you'd like to um, interact, um, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get to that. But uh, Dana's doing a multi-phase uh, home approach. So meaning they want to start with, kind of start small, you know, uh, get their primary residence established. And then over time, do things like a, a pool and shop space. Uh, this is a great question is, do you apply uh, for a loan that that accounts for everything that will eventually be on this property or uh, would it make more sense to do it in phases um so as far as the financing piece works we're going to go off the initial contract with the builder so if you are only building the primary residence piece of it then that's what we would do our approval around uh, mm -hmm. just that that one contract um, if you're looking to do additions in the future, then it would be a separate it, it, that would impact the appraised value. It would impact the lo total loan amount that you're taking over at, you know, you probably have paid down a little of the mortgage by that point. It might make more sense to get a home equity line to if it's going to be a smaller phase, uh, depending mm -hmm. on, on what you're looking to do in the future. So for approval purposes, you would just want to apply for what you're looking to do uh, with that initial construction project that's a good point uh dana would you like to add to that or does that help help answer your question and if you want to chat your reply or yeah oh no that helped thank you so much libby sure dana i'm very excited about uh getting started on your your project for you and your family that's that's what i'm um i'm thrilled about all of them but i, I love i love seeing you guys be on here today thank you um oh hi dre um <laughs> and billy we'll come back to you i see your hand has raised yeah sorry they, you guys are making me uh think of other questions to ask um so so, that's what we're here that's what we're, this is all about 
so potential adjustments during the construction phase. Um, so essentially increases or decreases to the plans. Um, how would we go about doing that? So essentially, because I mean, even decreasing your plans could affect the value of the ultimate appraisal, correct? You're so. right. So it is a one-time close. Uh, so we do not reappraise. So we cannot adjust, we cannot increase the construction line. Okay. Um, if you don't draw the full amount, then you would just take over a lower loan amount at the very end. Uh, but during the process, you're not able to increase the construction line because you're right, that would imp and that would impact value. Um, and yep. the collateral that we sort of agreed on at closing, if you will, we do suggest making sure your contract is got some buffer in there to make sure that unknown expenses, you know, will, will sort of be accounted for as as much as possible. Okay. Yeah. Like for instance, the pool as an example, if we decided, if we didn't include that at the beginning and then you get six months down the line and be like, oh, wow, a pool would be really great, but we don't have the funds because we didn't originally appraise for it. So that's the kind of stuff that I was, I was curious about. So that makes Got sense. Sounds, yeah. sounds similar to what Dana was saying about a, a, eventual things. So yep. yeah. Well, we've got time for one more question before we start to wrap up is uh, who would like the honors if, if nobody. What is the interest rate currently for the 8020? <laughs> I knew we were going to get an interest rate rate question. <laughs> Thank you, Jitin. I'm glad to have you. Yes. Uh, interest Thank rates you. are going to be, of course, driven by loan to value and credit score uh, and also program. So whether it's a jumbo mortgage versus a non jumbo mortgage. I would say on the safe side, you're looking at the mid to high sixes right now for a uh, 12 to 24 month lock for a construction loan. Uh, for the 30 year fixed rate, it's and then for the arms, they'll be a little bit lower, but not um, not terribly so. So maybe mid to low sixes. And that would be with no points. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jid. That's a great question. I know it's on everybody's mind, and sometimes nobody wants to ask the question. But um, <laughs> I, I do want to ask a quick one, Libby. Can how easy is it to to do a follow up or to do a um, refinance later down the road when interest rates drop? Is is that a good approach? It is. So there's no prepayment penalties. The minute you take over that permanent mortgage payment, you can refinance at any point after that. So uh, if the market has has gone down. If you chose an arm up front for the lower interest rate during construction, then uh, and, and then you know the market has has improved, then you can turn around the, the next day and apply for a refinance. Great. It's always good to keep that in mind because things do change. I, I do want to get to this one last question and then we'll we will wrap up. Esau, I haven't met you in person yet, but I'm glad to see you join. Would you like to you, uh, ask your question? Well, yeah. Uh, well, I just wanted to show you guys. There's a, a link to see the rate and in indexes. And Miss uh, Libby, you might know the company. It's Grand Bridge. Um, so, could I share my screen? Um, what I would look, uh, prefer you to do, if you don't mind, is um, send me some screenshots. I'll, I'll be sending out some uh, links later on. That might be a little bit easier, if you don't okay. mind, Esau. Thank you. Yeah. We have uh, like but, uh, for a minute right now. Um, okay. I'll send it over. Up in awesome. Thank you very much. Just just so we can get to, um, to everybody's thing. And, and that uh, I see that link. Uh, that would be great for people to 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 get to. Thanks, Esau. Um, I do want to get to this one quick question and then we'll um, get to the end here. Uh, Dana, uh, her husband, uh, Dre, is a veteran. Are there any special loans for veterans? Because I know there's probably some other folks that might be veterans as well. So we do have a VA loan uh, for a regular purchase or refinance, but not in combination with the construction loan. So the construction loan is going to be, it's, it's, it's going to follow a conventional uh, guideline sort of underwriting process. And then the 80% loan to value, of course, VA is going to be 100% financing. Um, so if it is something you would be eligible to refinance after the project was complete to a VA loan, if that made sense post-closing, uh, but actually during construction or through the construction loan, uh, it would just be a more conventional financing. Great. That would that would definitely help. Um, well, Libby, uh, 
some some as we wrap up some takeaways if somebody gets off of this phone call today and says um you know they'd like to take some next steps with you or with truest whenever that may be um lay out for us what a good next step to start the engagement process with you or um are you available to get a cup of coffee what does that look like oh absolutely and i'm local in atlanta um, of course, we've got branches. I, I bounce around to the branches a lot, so <laughs> whatever's convenient. Uh, very happy to have a phone call or answer emails. I know it's a very complex program, um, and I typically get a lot of questions, especially in the very beginning. Uh, so happy to answer them and and walk through the process and put together estimates as needed so you can see sort of what you're looking at in way of numbers. Um, definitely, yes. And so, uh, either I'd say email call or we can certainly meet if that's if that's more convenient. Great. I'll I'll be sending out some messages uh, and and follow up of this call with the link too uh, so that people can access that. Esau, I'll be glad to include some of those materials that you've uh, shared with us so that people can have some more resources. But Libby, if somebody walks into a Truist bank and drops your name, will they get special treatment? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Mm -hmm. Guys, thank you for joining us. Uh, I learned a lot just by listening to your questions as well. I'm sure there's going to be more questions that come up. We may do a follow up to this a couple months from now since there's so many topics to cover, but uh, I had fun participating even though it's late in everybody's day. Um, so Libby, thank you again uh, for being on with us today. I uh, really appreciate you giving us your time and, and thanks to everyone who joined us. Thanks, oh, absolutely. Jack. Thanks, thanks for thanks, having Libby. me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Let me thank you. You guys have a great afternoon, and I will look forward to seeing everyone soon. Bye. Bye.